Hey, oh, it's Omni Dog on Omni Bros Live on a Wednesday. It's the Wednesday show, and we have with us as a guest the omnibus collector himself. That is Mr. Riley Moore. Riley, how's it going? It's going really well. Uh, hopefully, everyone can hear me fine right now. I am uh, on my phone, so I turned off the camera, but I'll be home in about 10 minutes. It sounds like we've got a pretty. Uh, exciting show lined up for tonight yes we do we're going to be talking about entertainment news comic news and the unveiling of riley's x-men action figures marvel legends collection so that sounded a lot more exciting than it really is going to be oh i'm excited for it i haven't seen them so i'm way excited the uh so i i, I mean i have a bunch of them but they're in a box but i i got on what was it Tuesday? Is today Wednesday? Yeah. So I got it on, on Monday. I got the new wave, and it's it was delayed like a couple months after some people got it. But um, I know Jess is uh, excited about them, and basically I, I unboxed them, and I just I guess I plan on talking about my thoughts on those figures, and I've never really talked about action figures before, so I, I suppose it will be an interesting perspective to to hear from heck yes so yeah that'll be that'll be fun and uh jesse say what thank you for the compliment on my shirt i appreciate that very much yeah riley's blue man group that's his uh little avatar is the blue man oh on, on my side it's it's a <laughs> it's just a green square with an r oh uh, we're seeing uh a blue man oh okay. like like uh those uh street signs that just have you soccer players on them for kids playing in the streets type so of like thing a, i blew myself oh uh, sure okay uh why don't we talk about instocktrace.com um instocktrades.com is our sponsor we love them cameron merkler just celebrated his birthday monday which also happens to be kemi jacobs birthday who is a famous omni pup and um, so instocktrades.com you can get your collected editions for up to 50 percent off loyalty discounts add two percent to that they often have three percent sales every quarter we have an omni bros live code that gets you extra off over $50 in orders gets you free shipping in the United States. Fabulous packaging. And our favorite person in the world is your customer service person. That's Emily. Um, that's InSockTrades.com. And wait. Yeah, I got the reference. Tobias. Uh, isn't uh, Riley's little avatar of the blue man? Tobias yeah, Funke? The, yeah, that's why I said I, I, I blew myself. Yeah. Like, oh, 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 I didn't get that reference. Okay. Yeah, he, in the in the show, he, um, <laughs> he's always saying stupid shit that can be taken another way, and that was one of the lines. Right. Says, oh, I blew myself when he had blue <laughs> Blue one paint. One of my favorites, I, I liked the, um, he was an analyst, therapist, and it was the analerapist, um, is how it was spelt out on the door, and then Another one that my wife and I always say is uh, when he gets the, uh, uh, what was it, his, his license plate, the new license plate that says a new start, but it's A-N-U-S, <laughs> so it looks like anus tart. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, that was, we, uh, we say that a lot. Megan and I will say that to each other, like, freaking anus tart. <laughs> Um, I know he's a never nude. Yeah, there are dozens of them. <laughs> Anus tart. <laughs> now that's a show I could talk about for a long time. Unlike The Wire, which I've never watched. I love Arrested Development. When you said unlike The Wire, it sounded like you were about to say like, because The Wire sucks. And like, just Oh, no. No, I know better than... It. I've never even seen it. So, I mean, I want to, but I'm kind of scared of it. It just seems so real and gritty. It's 
I I need a little bit. Uh, I eventually need. To, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'll watch it. How many seasons is it? Do you know. I, haven't watched it either so i can't i know some people are probably going to be like are you kidding me you haven't watched it either um but yes yeah, so i i can't comment i don't know how many seasons matt how many seasons is the wire four or five 20 <laughs> five seasons i i uh i don't know i i definitely do want to see it i need to finish so many other things though before i start it yeah, like thousands of comics. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a huge stack of summer comics that I need to uh, finish up. Oh, Killmonger was on that show? Yeah, when he was, uh, when he was younger. I've, yeah, I did see pictures of that. Now, Killmonger also is a big anime fan, right? Yeah. And I'm blanking on Killmonger's real name. Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, he was in... Uh, I remember the first thing that I saw him in that I can recall it was the movie Chronicle by uh, Josh Trank, written by everyone's favorite uh, Max Landis. Oh. Um... Sorry, I'm trying to get the dogs situated, let them out. You can turn on your camera now and we can at least see your face. Well, I'm I'm like moving the camera all over the place. So oh, all right. It wouldn't be uh, focused on me. Let me see where Lou is. Right now. Let me see where Lou is. Um. Of course, the, the show where I'm here is the one where he's going to be late. I think, what didn't someone the other day actually say that they, they thought that Louise and I, like, had a fallout or something? Yeah. Like, which was funny because just, a, like, the week before, I mentioned that it would be funny if there was a rumor about that. Yeah, there, and there is, apparently. And now it's a reality. Yeah. Uh, I forget where that came out. That came out in some chat recently. We were, I think it was in our, in our Omni Bros live chat on Facebook. Someone mentioned that someone that watches, that used to watch our show when it was me and Louise doing it between our two channels, um, thought that we just stopped doing it because they didn't realize that we moved on to this channel. Right. That's right. That's where it came from. And then someone had to tell. Uh oh, did I lose you? Uh, I lost. Wait, are we still on? Yeah, there we are. Okay. So it's just uh, me right now. I'm waiting for Riley to boot up his computer, I'm waiting for Lou to join. So um, I will start off by taking questions from the chat. That's always good. We can play the drinking game. Do you own it? Have you read it? And if I own it and haven't read it, you take the shot. Of course, it's only like four o'clock in the afternoon in California, but that's not too early to get started drinking. It's after seven here. <laughs> Tonight's topic is uh, comic news, entertainment news, and um, we also have, there's Riley. Sorry, my and, phone died right as I was pulling on my computer. That's fine. Comic news, entertainment news, and Riley's X-Men action figures. The uh, hard-hitting content. Uh, Chris M., you do have a good point there. I'm just trying to keep it fun. <laughs> but your point is well taken. Um, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be doing that. What happened? 
<laughs> Chris M is, I, I said when your phone died that I was doing the show alone and that uh, we should play the drinking game. Uh, do I own it? Have I read it? And if I own it and haven't read it, the, um, the viewer has to take a shot. And Chris M said an alcoholic promoting drinking is so wrong. Yeah, I don't know. What, what are you thinking about, Jess? I don't know. I don't. I generally, I try not to think. Um. So, what what do we want to talk about right now? Since Luis is late and I am officially here. <laughs> Nick Munoz said we would all die with that drinking game. How dare you? Dang! Called out. I am called out. Um. Let's see. We can, uh, why don't we wait for, why don't we, do you have your action figures close by? Yeah, let me, sorry, I'm trying to make it a little bit better looking in here. Let me get some light. I'm still in my work slacks. Oh, okay. All right, so I do have them. They're all unboxed because uh, I, I already wanted to start playing with them. I can start talking about those. Um, I'm going to go roughly just one figure at a time talking about what, um, like, from basically my least. Well, I have one that I really didn't like out of the seven-figure set, one that I am mostly disappointed with, but for personal bias, and then the rest of them I really liked, and then I'll talk about the Build-A-Figure. Basically, uh, quickly... The, the newest X-Men, Marvel Legends X-Men set came out. Uh, it's been on the market for probably two months now. I've seen people getting it. Um, some people earlier releases in other countries, I believe. I don't know. I was just able to get it this week uh, from whoever I pre-ordered it from. Um, this is the third Legends set of this current, like, uh, unless it, it would be the fourth if you count the Toys R Us exclusive set but I don't really count that set where you can build the uh, Jubilee vampire version Jubilee. The, the first set was build a figure juggernaut. The second set was a build a figure of warlock from the new mutants. And this third set was a build a figure of apocalypse. Mm. Um, so there are seven figures total. Uh, each of the seven figures contained. Yes. Each figure contained a piece of apocalypse so once you collect the whole set, you can have a full apocalypse. All right, so I'm going to start. The, there's one figure that I didn't particularly like too much out of the set. So I'll start with this one, and that is Gladiator of the, uh, of the Shi'ar Royal Guard. So just a quick look at Gladiator here, and he's not a bad figure by any means just looking at that uh, just looking around the figure it's just he's kind of a boring figure yeah he's you know there there's nothing terribly interesting about him or the sculpt there's not a lot of uh detail in the sculpting on the body it's basically just uh a reused mold and the only original piece would be his head which has the pointed ears and the mohawk that has a little bit of blue detail in there the cape is really annoying because <laughs> it doesn't seem to want to fit correctly like it's it's in a peg on his back but you can see like the the little tassel on the front doesn't lay flat so that annoys me and then as always with these rubber uh cape accessories they bend in in heat and then they'll stay that way so this one is bent with this right here and it just it looks awkward to me i'm not a big fan of that kind of stuff and honestly i'm not i know that there's some people who are going to be like oh fuck you like i'm not a huge fan of the character of the gladiator he's he's not that interesting of a character to me and honestly i would have rather them used this slot in this set for another character i know a lot mm -hmm. of people again are gonna disagree with me because a lot of people have probably been waiting for a gladiator figure but i would have rather another character taken that slot um and they release a box set that had a bunch of members of the shi'ar royal guard because as far as i know i think that gladiator is the only uh figure 
from that group that has been released, at least with the new legend sets. Now, I, I can be completely off base, I can be wrong, and that's fine. Someone will correct me and I'll, I'll accept that correction. But uh, I, I think that he's the first. So there's, I know, I'm, I know there's not, at least with the newer figures like Lilandra and stuff like that, but I feel like that would have been a good opportunity for them to release an exclusive box set uh, like they did with the Guardians of the Galaxy set from Entertainment Earth. It doesn't have to be something so rare as like the uh, Books of the Vishanti set that was, I believe, from one of the Comic-Cons, but just a set so that people can get a whole series of these uh, Shi'ar Royal Guard characters and not have to shove one of them into an otherwise really cool set of figures. Um, again, he's just, my disappointment just lies in that he's a boring figure and, and it's not the most interesting character for me. And there's a lot of other characters I would have rather had. Um, one, one quick question. Yeah. We have two quick questions. Yes. Avi G is asking, I think I know the answer to this. Uh, are you both buying Batman 66? I'm almost positive you bought it. Yeah, I have it sitting next to me. Oh, you do? So yeah. you can even show us some of uh, the interior art then? Yep. Oh, well, you're the star of the show tonight. Um, I also bought it, but I just bought it Monday morning. Uh, and Cartel from Hell says, do you guys know if the Spider-Man Clone Saga Volume 1 Omni is prone to binding separation? I have not heard problems with it like i've heard about the miles morales omni have yeah, you heard any i haven't seen or heard anything about that one but i think it's fair to say that people might have just ignored it because compared to miles miles is a book that i can imagine more people buying and immediately wanting to read whereas the clone saga it's a lot of people buying it to kind of fill in a gap and not necessarily want to read it immediately mm, okay uh, like myself Dark Satari, that bell going off has been turned off. That was my wife and daughter chatting with each other and including me in it for some reason. And that was the messenger app on my, or, or the iChat app or some Apple app that was pinging and I turned it off. So I apologize for that. It was really annoying. Um, so figures, or do you want to see the Batman book? Uh, let's finish the figures and then we can do Batman. Okay, I'll put it to the side here, but it's it's ready to go. Okay, so the next one, this one I have personal bias that kind of affects how much I enjoy it, and that is uh, Multiple Man, Jamie Madrox. So this Multiple Man figure is, uh, it looks like the version of Multiple Man from the first X Factor run by uh, Peter David rather than the later X-Factor run uh, where he wears the, the green shirt. And he, uh, let, me, let me just grab the, the trade of the, uh, the older one. I don't have one of the newer run on me. Nash Villains, I fixed my Fantastic Four Omnis, so you can relax now. Whoops, where'd right. you go? Oh, okay. Yeah. For, uh, okay, so here's just a, a shot from the old Peter David trade paperback. You can see, I believe, in that panel right there, there's a bunch of different multiple man um, showing up right there. This is what his costume is based off of. And so I've placed this head on him because I prefer the post house of m you said you silenced it. I know. She just said sorry. Okay, <laughs> just quit doing it. <laughs> um, I, I chose to put that head on him because it looks closer to the post House of M look. It just doesn't have the M tattoo on his face. Um, but I really wish they would have done that figure with the you know the green shirt, and he still has the the leather jacket, uh, leather overcoat in that later costume, at least at some points. But they decided to not do that. He comes with three heads. Um, two of them have the cowl over it. One of them is a smirk, and one of them Three is a little heads. more... heads, that's cool. A little, a little more angry. And I, I understand it was a really smart move on Hasbro to include the two extra heads for this character in particular because this is a good one for army builders to want to buy multiple of. So uh, they can buy at least three, and each one of the three is going to have a different face.
face. A different oh my head. god! Now I want it. So I have three of them and display them in front of my X Factor bucks. Oh my god! I'm doomed. <laughs> um, he's he's a decent character, a decent figure. Otherwise, I just like I said, it's personal bias. I wish that they had given him that later costume. Otherwise, he's a fine figure. It's a reused mold for his body. You know, just blue spandex all around. Uh, another thing I would have liked is if he maybe had replaceable uh, or interchangeable arms so that you can have just blue spandex arms or you can have the, the ones with the coat over it. Because uh, mm -hmm. you can remove the the plastic coat, but then he just has the sleeves and it's, you know, it's kind of awkward looking. It's like a reverse vest. Um. So yeah, there's a, that's multiple man. Here's a good question. Do the Marvel Legend figures go out of stock same as Omni's after a while? Yes. Yeah, especially if they are like Target exclusive or Walmart or Walgreens exclusive, they can be hard to find. Yeah, they uh, those sets, even when they first come out, like immediately when they come out, you'll start seeing some of those figures go for high prices. Like right now, uh, there's the Deadpool wave, the Deadpool second wave where you can build Sauron. And of that wave, I know that the all new Wolverine figure, um, she is hard to find. And I see her going by herself for like 40 bucks on eBay. So what? that's why what I tend to do is order the entire box of the entire series of figures, mm -hmm. because that way, you know, you're, you're basically going to get them all for, a total of twenty to twenty-five dollars each, instead of trying to track them all down uh, and and losing out on finding certain ones. I think I specifically got that wave so I could specifically get her. I'm gonna dig through a box I have right now while you're talking to see if I can find her. If you have that entire wave, it's also uh, Bishop, Omega Red. Deadpool in some underwear, Deadpool in an X-Men costume, and Deadpool or Lady Deadpool are the oh, other. Oh, you know what? I don't. Uh, I don't think I. Let me see if I ordered it. Has it come out yet? It's out, but it might be like one that uh, some retailers see. don't have yet. Just like with this one, it took me a couple months. Anyway, next figure is Magneto. And this Magneto is in his uh, costume. It's based off of the post Avengers vs. X-Men uh, costume that you see in Cullen Bunn's Uncanny X-Men run with artwork by the uh, the fantastic Greg Land. Um, <laughs> it's uh, primarily black with red uh, detail. That's a good one. It's very comic accurate as far as the way that the helmet looks, the molding on the helmet, the way that the cape and cowl look, uh, the shoulder pads. And I know I have it uh, an accessory over them, but the gauntlets and his boots are very comic accurate as well to this look. Um, the accessories that he comes with are obviously these um, purple lightning effects. Mm -hmm. These are really cool. I've never... I've never had a figure that had these effects before, but there's two figures in this line that have these lightning effects and they're cool. They, they wrap around the figures, arms, or I guess legs, if you want. And they're meant to be uh, signifying his magnetic abilities. He has uh, underneath the purple lightning effect. And I don't want to remove it cause it's a little bit of a pain to put back in there. Yeah. Those things are always hard, like <laughs> fireballs and, things like that that come off the hands those are hard to stay on it's hard to get it just right mm -hmm. it's hard to get it just how i wanted it but he's got the his hands are also purple and opaque just like oh, yeah. the effects you can kind mm -hmm. of see it in there and he comes with alternate hands but his alternate hands are both just black gloved fists so you can see there's the other fist so it's it's not very interesting he doesn't have open hands or anything like that his purple hands are open though. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that this is the better look. The one big disappointment with this figure, and this is something that they just don't do, um, is I wish it would have come with a little flight stand. Uh, Cause it oh, yeah. looks really cool. Like if he's levitating like that. Well, you can get, um, 
one of these dudes and suspend him. But I I don't want to spend extra money on it. I see. I feel like that's something that Hasbro should start doing is like got it, including flight stands in with particular figures because it would be a better thing. And I, I feel like it, it sucks that I have to spend extra money or build one myself out of like a coat hanger. Um, that kind of sucks. Next figure I've got. Oh, and he has an alternate head too. It's the uh, maskless or sorry, helmetless with kind of long swept back white hair. That's mm. his alternate. And for the record, I have the Deadpool wave, but it is in my pile of loot at Big Bad Toy Store, so it hasn't been sent yet. Okay. Now here's this one I'm very, very fond of, and that Ooh. is Psylocke. And a lot of the reason why I enjoy this figure so much is because of the accessories that she comes with. Uh, she has her katana, and all of this is you know meant to be made out of her her psychic energy the uh, katana and it's surrounded by this removable uh energy right here so that's an entirely separate accessory is this uh you know kind of spirally looking thing that wraps around the sword um i'd never seen this before but i but magic the one that was in the books of the vishanti set that is also getting her own uh walgreens exclusive release she also has that kind of effect but it's blue instead of pink uh she has the little dagger effect that can go on her fist and then this little accessory the uh kind of psychic tiara that appears when she's using her powers mm. uh the king pink uh kind of butterfly looking thing and that goes very easily over her face and it'll stick there easily uh very nice looking face sculpt on her and i got the purple variant hair uh, there is a black version as well. I was really happy that I got the purple version. I think that one's the the more sought after of the two. So I'm really happy about that. Um, the little sash that she has looks like it's just the same one that they use for Phoenix. I promise I'm not trying to show her butt off. Um, yeah, this is a really solid figure. It's really the accessories that make that one uh special for me that really make that one pop out as a really great piece of this set um i know is Psylocke popular on her own it's like a 40 dollar ebay type thing i don't know i think maybe the the purple variant one is but i'm not sure if if the black hair variant is as popular i'm i have a temptation to buy the uh at least by the purple very or the black haired one and paint her costume black so that I can have an X-Force version, but I don't care that much. So I'm probably not ever going to do that. Uh, mm. Let's see next. This one is really, really awesome. And that is the eighties Mohawk storm figure. Uh, so probably my favorite look for storm period this figure is another one that I really think would have benefited from having a flight stand because she oh, just yeah. would look incredible. She yeah. also has the the lightning effects that wrapped around her hands, just like that Magneto that I showed off did. Her lightning effects, of course, are yellow. Um, the sculpting of the body, there's just so much good detail. The belts look great. She's got little uh, stitched on pockets on the back, and you can see belt loops there. On her pants, there's uh, the uh tubing down the side of the her jeans her like combat boots look awesome her vest looks great the uh she's got her black choker around her neck and her lightning bolt earrings there's just a lot of really fantastic detail that's been put into this figure um there's even some on the on the mohawk itself there's some shading that's kind of painted in there which is really great um Really gives it a little bit of depth, and I just I enjoy the kind of smirk that she has on her face yeah. as well. It looks this is a fantastic figure. I really need to get a flight stand for her mm -hmm. uh, just to make her look great. It's my only, my first and only storm figure, and I think that it's a very worthy uh, first storm figure. 
uh, I was very, very pleased. I was looking forward to this one immensely, and I was very pleased with the way that it turned out. All right, and then let's see. I have a storm figure somewhere. Where is she? Hmm. I've got two more, and then the build a figure. So the last two I like together as a set. That's Wolverine and Sabretooth. So I'll, I'll show Sabretooth real quick. Um, Sabretooth, I was excited about for sure, just because I don't have a saber. Excuse me, Sabretooth, and this is the version of the character that I really know. Um, but this figure turned out a lot better than I could have expected it to. The detail that's in his face, just the you know the expression, the paint in his eyes, uh, his teeth, his freaking mutton chops have shading and detail on them. <laughs> yeah, they do. The the uh, furry. Uh, I don't know what you'd call that collar around his mm -hmm. his, uh, his neck has uh, shading and detail as well. And that's removable pretty easily. There's a little peg that it'll fit in on the back. Oh yeah. So if you don't want that, then you don't have to have that on there. But I, I feel like you need to have that on him. It just has to have that on there. Um, he's got the larger body than most of the legends. So he's like in the same scale as I, I feel like they use the same body as Colossus and the gladiator, but he's got slightly different sculpt on his, uh, sorry, I'm trying to put the, the fur back on his back. He's got a slightly different sculpt on his arms. Uh, it has this little thorn on the back of his elbow and then his hands have claws on mm, them and they're yeah, in the cool. open position which makes a lot of sense because obviously he doesn't fight with fists he wants to scratch people with his right. claws. Uh, so I was really really surprised with how well this figure turned out. I'm really happy to have it in my collection now especially going against the classic yellow and blue tiger stripe uh, kind of Jim Lee version of Wolverine. I like how you have him posed there. I, yeah, this is probably how I'm going to pose him, otherwise launching into attack against Sabretooth. Um, mm -hmm. Now, this one, and let me grab the other Wolverine real quick from the two, two sets ago. The other Wolverine is the yellow and brown costume from, like, John Byrne era. Um, good figure, very solid figure, great looking, claws are good, blah, blah, blah. Uh, his face is pretty normal, just kind of a light scowl. But this one, if you look at his face in comparison, yeah, he's got that, you know, he's baring his teeth. There's detail in his lips. He's got uh, one eye is slightly closed more than the other eye because he's kind of berserking, like, wilding mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah. Um, his claws are a little differently colored. Then that one, I think they're a little lighter, or no, they're a little darker actually than the other one. Um, these little shoulder pads are slightly movable, probably removable if you want. But the part that really impressed me were his biceps, which a are larger than on the brown costume, and I can't, I, I can't tell if you can see it on here, but they have sculpted arm hair on his biceps. There's not shading or anything. They're not painted, but there's little We little can't really lines. see it. Pull it back a little bit. See if the camera can focus on a little bit better. Yeah, I can sort of see it. Now that you pull it back, he's got bicep hair. Yeah, it's like very tricep lightly hair. lightly sculpted lines on there that I think are very clearly meant to be hairs on his arms. Uh, now which that's I think, a cool feature. That's pretty intense. It would have been cooler if they did add a little bit of uh, shading on that, but I'm not complaining because they already went far enough as to include the little sculpting on there. But it's... I was very satisfied with the brown one. This one, by far, blows this one out of the water. Uh, another thing that I'm really satisfied about with these Wolverines is that he is properly shorter than all of the other figures oh uh -huh. he's definitely in the correct scale with uh let's say madrox is the normal scale wolverine is a solid you know 
what half a head shorter than he is and then comparing it to like a uh, gladiator or saber tooth is the same size he's quite a bit shorter than this figure so he's a lot shorter than colossus um so I, I really like that they pay attention to the scale with these figures but yeah i'm just to show them off one more time like that face is just intense looking and they also uh extended the the pointed ear pieces on his cowl. And then finally, the big ol' Apocalypse Build-A-Figure. Now, this one is taller even than Gladiator mm. by about a, an entire head. Uh, the six pieces are head, torso, arm, arm, leg, leg, and then these two tubes mm -hmm. are, are one piece. Um, he's more or less fully posable ankles, legs, arms, all that jazz. The tubes are of course easily removed. He's got these, uh, shoulder pieces. His neck piece here will also come off rather easily, but they have, it has pegs that you can rest them on to keep it on there. And was he easy to put together? Yes. Yeah. He I know was super I've had easy. a problem with a lot of my build of figures that they, they, uh, they don't fit properly. I got to get a hair dryer out to soften them up to push them together. Like my no. warlock, I've got warlock here, and I have to be really careful with him because uh, he's he's very fragile to to keep together. My uh, my warlock's leg is a little finicky, not because it's fragile, but because it just looks like. Uh, it's kind of bent in in one direction. Mm. But yeah, he's super easy to, to fit together. I had no trouble at all just shoving the pegs and the holes and all that good stuff. But this is a really solid Build-A-Figure. I think this by far is my favorite compared to the other two X-Men related Build-A-Figures with uh, Juggernaut and Warlock. Uh, and I cannot wait because they have coming soon i don't know how soon but coming soon as an archangel figure uh that has uh separate heads so that he can have the like the death mask when he was a uh, horseman of apocalypse oh right and he also comes with an extra uh interchangeable hand that has like a saw or no not a saw a claw on it which is something that uh, apocalypse changed to in the comics you do that but yeah this is a super super nice figure very nice build a figure great face sculpt and body do, you looks do you remember where you ordered this wave did you get it from big bad toy store or where did you do you remember where you ordered it all you got it all as a one wave right yeah i i ordered it i don't remember who it was from but it was on ebay and oh. honestly i probably should have ordered it elsewhere because i think if i had looked for like an extra minute, I would have found a better deal. <laughs> I get it. And there, it's cool because it's a it's a seven figure wave. But if you order a whole box, it's eight figures to a box. I'm not 100 percent sure which one's the duplicate that you get two of. But sometimes you'll you can order the box and get two of one. Right. So then you can have one to you know sell off and recoup a little bit of your costs. Oh, that's a good idea. Obviously, it'll never be the rare one because it's one that there's two per box of. But I feel like the uh, for this set, the two per box should have been multiple man. And then it would have made people not want to sell the extra figure. Mm. FedEx is coming by and I'm hoping they're dropping off goodies for me. They're right in front of my house. Oh, no, he's leaving. No. Oh, that was a huge tease. That was. Dang. <laughs> you just like watched all hope drain out of my face. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's the wave. That's the X Men wave. That is the uh, the third of the current line of X Men Legends waves. There's also two Deadpool waves currently out. Um, an upcoming fourth wave is on the. Oh, he's backing up. Oh, is he backing up into your driveway? He's backing up towards me. Yeah. What is he getting out? Okay, I'm not even going to pay attention. I'm just going to talk. If it happens, it happens. 
<laughs> it's not happening. It's not happening. God damn it. Okay, I'm disappointed now. Anyway, um, there's an upcoming fourth wave. They haven't announced everything of it, but it looks like Gambit. Um, was it? Uh, shit. That there's a uh, one of the Reavers. I forget his name. Um, Blink from the Age of Apocalypse timeline. And then uh, it looks like a classic Magneto and a classic Mystique are going to be in this wave. Uh, maybe Professor X, but I know Professor X is getting his own separate figure that comes with the uh, the hover chair from the 90s mm. uh, books. And then there's going to be a, uh, I believe that it's a six inch scale Wolverine Days of Future Past that comes with a Sentinel that's like wow. huge, like 18 inches or some shit like that. It's It's ridiculously huge. Um, and then of course the Archangel and then magic is going to be released at Walgreens. So Ooh. a bunch of, I'm super excited for that. Yeah. I'm excited for that. I'm hoping that my wife does not care that I have like this character in a swimsuit basically. So. Oh yeah. My favorite character. The only thing that would make me happier is an Emma Frost with her Stepford cuckoos. That would be awesome. I, I really want to see a, uh, a new mutant set with all of the classic, like the original set of new mutants with the blue and, uh, or the, the yellow and black costumes, like the training costumes. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also, uh, magic as dark child where she has like the horns and, and all that good stuff. That oh, would yeah. be really awesome. But anyway, yeah, that's, those are my, those are my new toys. That was nice. They're a nice, it's a nice set. I definitely was, uh, happy with, getting them. It was a gift for my birthday from my wife. So I didn't really spend my own money on it, but, uh, even if I had, had, yeah, if I had though, I, I definitely would have been satisfied. Yeah. I, um, I got the reason I got, uh, well, one thing is I, I haven't, um, I haven't unboxed these yet because I'm going to do a haul on them, but I got the Spider-Man way because I wanted the spy, Durr, build yeah. a figure and I love I'm a sucker for all Spider-Man legend ones which is why I also got the whole wave of Venom oh yeah and because of Monster Venom who's gonna be cool and wait what's Spider look like oh yeah Spider is gonna be like that I don't know how you can't just immediately open all those toys like I, I got these in the mail two days ago and immediately had to bust them open. <laughs> I'm saving them for a haul video, so it's going to be a little bit. Um, but I'm also trying to make room for them. I used to have all my spiders crawling up my door in different poses, and that was really fun. But then when the flood happened, they had to paint the door, repaint the door, and all my spider figures came down. And it was like 20 figures and now i'm trying to decide if i want to put them back up because they were to, all in really cool crawling poses and things i need to make more room because with this new wave i don't have enough room on one shelf for all the x-men figures because i have the the three waves most of the deadpool wave because i, I didn't buy two of them because i didn't give a crap about them they weren't x-men related um and then a bunch of older legends and other x-men related figures and all the build a figures and stuff so they don't all fit on one wide billy shelf anymore there's way too much but at the same time i'm i've run out of room on my x-men shelf because i just have a lot of x-men books period yeah that's my problem with the spider figures is i have more spiders than I do spider books and it doesn't make sense to have spider books on my flash shelf or something. So I need to get them crawling all over this room again. Oh, um, speaking of books. Oh yeah. Batman 66. Let me so isolate was, you. Okay. Go I was going to, I was going to actually start reading it last night cause I got the book yesterday and I was so fucking tired, I just passed out instead. Um, anyway, so the, it's a Mondo poster, is what they used as the cover. Um, I don't remember the, the artist. I'm sure someone can spit the artist off, of, off the top of their head, but me, I have to look. Um, excuse me. Martin 
end scene, on scene, is the artist there. And then, of course, Mike Allred did a lot of the covers for the actual series. So there's a really cool one. And the spine is just incredible. That's without the dust jacket on? And it's the same on the dust jacket. Okay. So you get the, the spine has Batman and Robin doing the classic. Right. Where they, uh, <laughs> they're, they're just walking on the floor, but they flip the camera. So it looks like they're walking up a building. Um, and there's the back cover. A bunch oh, of different stuff going box. on. Cool. Um, so yeah, I haven't, I've not read any of these comics, but it's all by Jeff Parker. And by now people should know I'm a huge proponent for Jeff Parker. Mm -hmm. Um, so there are there's a, a good table of contents at the beginning here, and it runs through all of the different stories that are included. So you can see quickly like a bunch of the different villains that appear in there. There's uh, even like you know there's all the big ones like Joker, and Joker is meant to look like the Caesar Romero Joker, where he has the little mustache that's been oh, painted it, over. Oh, it does have that. If you can see the lines on his upper lip. Oh, that is so great. What a great touch. Yeah. It, every, every image, they make sure to add that in there. And they even have some characters that did not even appear on the 66 show, like Two-Face, make appearances in this comic. So and you Harley Quinn makes an appearance too, right? Yes. I was actually going to look for an image of her. Um, but I don't know exactly which point. I think that was issue 11. Okay. I want to okay. say. Do, 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 do. Uh, the Hatter takes the crown in digital chapters 10 to 11, so. Oh, okay, maybe I'm thinking she was, she was on the cover for 11. It was a variant cover that was hard to get. Well, that, that was digital chapters, so 11 would have probably been much later in the series. Here's a this chapter I just flipped open to. Joker sees red. It has a Harlequin, uh, but it's, it's the Joker in a Harlequin costume. And at the bottom, you can see the red hood is in there. Um, so not... Uh, Oh, yeah, there she is, Harleen Quinzel. Let me see if there's something of her in costume to show you. Let's, yeah, it shows much of the art as you can. People are dying for this book for some reason. Because it's awesome. Yeah. Well, it, there's Dr. Harleen Quinzel, but I didn't see her, at least in this chapter, wearing her costume. So I'm not 100% sure... Because I, I don't want to spoil too much of the book for myself as I haven't read it yet. Um, I'm just trying to flip through to show you guys. And that was uh, Joe Quinones. Or, uh, that was his artwork in that chapter. Oh, man. The, uh, that chopper. like in the uh, movie, the classic scene where he's hanging down uh, with the bat shark repellent. Bat shark repellent, right. Um, there's a question. Questions are if, if you consider this worth a buy. Well, I'll, you already bought it, so obviously you do think it's worth a buy. Um, neither of us have read it yet. Um, I bought it to read it. Yeah, I, me, me too. Um, it, I I think it got good reviews. So I'll, I'll say, issues. as far as I've heard, period, this series as it was coming out was renowned, or not renowned, it was very well reviewed throughout. Um, personally, I, I read the reviews and I, I, even without reading the reviews and seeing that it was supposed to be really positively uh, written, really well written stories, I would have bought this anyway and trusted that it would be good because it's Jeff Parker. And I love Jeff Parker as a writer. Um, I've loved pretty much anything that he writes and I've yet to have really been disappointed by him. So I knew going in that I would love this. Secondly, right before they announced this omnibus, I was about to order all the paperbacks for this series anyway. 
So I was happy that I held off because I would have been spending about the same amount to buy the paperbacks as I did to buy the omnibus. Maybe like I might've spent like $15 more or something. Hmm. So personally, this one was inevitable, I guess. I, I would have had it in my collection one way or another. Um, I also, I know that I was not born in the sixties, but I still grew up when I was younger watching the uh, Batman movie, the Adam West Batman movie on repeat. So I have very fond memories of Adam West and Burt Ward and Cesar Romero Batman uh, show. And here's a cool right from the, towards the middle of the book with Lord Deathman. which was a uh, character from the Bat manga that uh, Grant Morrison later used in his run. Um, so yeah, I, I had a lot of very fond memories of this and that was a big thing that drove me to want to read this series. So I'm very excited, extremely excited to have it. Um, and it's probably gonna make me wanna go back and watch the campy old series as well. Um, I can't. I can't tell you what a big deal that show was to seven-year-old Omni Dog as an Omni pup. Um, <laughs> that show was everything to me. Of course, I was. I was around when it was on the air twice a week, which was a big deal. If I recall correctly, it was Wednesday, Thursday nights on ABC. But back when there were only three channels, yes, I'm going to go into that rap. When there was only three channels or four channels with um, Oakland's KTVU, this is in Northern California. No, there's a page with a lot of pals and biffs and socks and stuff, and that's artwork by Mike Allred. And then a bunch of rogues on there. And then I, I wanted to show also this page that has the classic Batmobile on there, also from Allred. Yeah, it was such a big deal. Um, even grown-ups were into it, and there was all kinds of merch that came out, all kinds of – I remember the trading cards were a big deal. Um, let's see. I think I was living in Salinas, California, before we moved to Carmel when it was on. So that puts it around 66, I would guess, which is why I guess they call it Batman 66. Um, but it would always end on a cliffhanger, and then they'd have the next show the next night where, you know, they, they figure out how to, Batman and Robin figure out how to not get dropped into a vat of boiling acid. Um, and, okay, let me isolate you on that one. Oh, <laughs> with his mustache. Yep. There's a huge cover gallery in the back. Yeah, holy cover gallery, Batman. There's a whole like section of the book. That last chunk is covers and then some sketch pages. You know what? I bet that I bet this book I bet this book is so popular it becomes hard to find in a couple of years. I think this is kind of a sleeper surprise book that people are gonna kind of sleep on and it gets picked up. And it goes out of print. That's just, I'm basing that on nothing but a gut feeling. I think that it's one that a lot of people are, they're curious about, but probably skipping on right now. And then as more people are getting it and talking about it, that's when they're going to start wanting to grab it. And like you said, maybe in a couple of years, it'll be one that goes out of print and it'll wind up being one of those where like you see people who had it kind of on the bottom of their wish lists on the bottom of their their list to buy list uh all of a sudden like oh shit i should have moved on that last year when it was still available yeah that's what got me to order it monday i i said well i i feel like this was kind of a bit of a recommendation because i i know you are such a huge fan of jeff parker's writing and you were excited to get it and while you didn't specifically re recommend it to me I feel like I got it to you. Uh, I give you 50% of the credit and then the other 50% goes to fear of missing out. I didn't want to have this thing go out of print on me, which I, I don't know. For some reason, I feel like people are sleeping on it 
and they're, it's just kind of um, people are going to once it comes out. I think people are going to see how fun it is now that I mean now that it's out, people will look at it and see how fun it is, and it's going to because I'm if I recall correctly, the comic book was really popular. It was a it was a digital first series, and it, oh, it was. was. Yeah, it was a really popular digital series. So each individual issue um, in the like physical release was like three issues of the digital release. So it was uh, a lot of these stories are just like three installments. Like the first story in here, The Riddler's Ruse, was from digital chapters one through three. And then four and five were the story Emperor Penguin. And then mm. issue six was uh, Chandel's Chantus. So um, it's kind of oh, in, yeah, almost in, uh, in threes. Uh, Can you do me a favor in the cover gallery, look up to see if they have the alternate Harley Quinn number 11 cover. Because I remember I searched like a madman for that five years ago or whenever it came out. Well, there's Harley this one? Yeah. Wait, but that's yeah. for that's for Harley Quinn number six. That's her series. Oh, okay. Let me see. Try Batman sixty six, number eleven. I feel that's Avi G. These are news stories that mimic the show. So the answer to your question is kind of yes. They're the they're similar to the show, but they're news stories by Jeff Parker. There's a variant for number 11, but it's just the Joker. It doesn't have Harley on it. No, that's not the one I'm thinking of. Let me see if it's maybe in the contents of the book, but it, it looks like there's not... Oh, yeah, there is cover images. Never mind. I'm dumb. Uh, let me see. That was number eight, so I should be pretty close. Yeah, I this was really really high on my list of books to get, and it was a immediate day one purchase for me. Uh, as soon as they announced it, I was super excited. Um, it was actually like a book that was on my wish list of books that I wished they would publish. Mm. Okay, should be getting to it pretty soon. So we'll see if it's the cover you're thinking of. Yeah. I love that they have Cesar Romero's mustache. Um, prepare to be disappointed because the cover for number 11 that they have is just this one. Oh, yeah. Gosh, I feel like there's a variant, though. Oh, <clears throat> maybe the issue is that Harley appears in that issue. Maybe that's what was so hot about it, was that it was a Harley Quinn appearance. I think so. I think that you're correct, but I can't be 100% sure. There's just a blonde chick that's kind of hanging around. Hmm, for some reason yes. that's... that's her. Okay, that's what it was. She was, it was her appearance in that issue that made it a hot comic. And here she is towards the end. She starts laughing maniacally, but she doesn't get into the costume there. So I, I don't know if she ever appears in costume throughout. But like I said earlier, I don't, I don't want to spoil the book for myself. So I'm not going to look at everything. Uh, I just wanted to give some snippets of information. Um, but on the back, just to read it. Um, Real quickly, uh, same bat style, all new bat adventures. Tune in or read on for the continuing adventures of America's fun-loving, action-packed pop culture icons from the classic Batman TV series. Along with the returning regular cast of rogues playing Batman, Robin, Batgirl, and Commissioner Gordon, uh, plaguing Batman, Robin, Batgirl, and Commissioner Gordon, the Joker, Riddler, Penguin, Catwoman, Mr. Freeze, Egghead, and Olga, Queen of the Co Cossacks, uh, Gotham City must contend with new appearances from the rest of Batman's color colorful villains. Harlequin, Scarecrow, Bane, Poison Ivy, and Two-Face, none of whom ever graced your Bat TVs. Collected for the first time in one titanic tome, the entirety of Batman and Robin's adventures can be read at one Bat time, including the story behind Harlan Ellison's <laughs> outline and adapted comic for the 
series Lost Episode. Oh, featuring yeah. Crusading cast of care, uh, creators, including Jeff Parker, Michael Allred, Laura Allred, Jonathan Case, and others. Batman 66 Omnibus collects Batman 66 1 through 30 and Batman 66 The Lost Episode number 1. So what it does not include is all the Batman 66 tie-in type uh, miniseries or crossover miniseries with Green uh, Green Hornet and oh, right. the $6 billion man or $6 million man or whatever. I think there was one with uh, Wonder Woman 77 as well. Mm -hmm. Uh and then they did a Wonder Woman 77 meets the Bionic Woman. Yeah, I think I'm thinking of issue 11 because it had an appearance. I believe it was the first appearance of Harley Quinn in Batman 66. That might be what I'm thinking of. She what it, But it was a, like a variant cover, something. I can't remember now. It feels like it was five years ago that I was hy hyped up on it. Um, either way... Really happy about that book. I'm super stoked about it. I'm glad to have it. I'm happy to get to reading it at some point in the hopefully very near future. Um, I just from appearances alone, I highly recommend it. It's a beautiful looking book. It's well crafted, and the artwork is. If you like the colorful kind of uh, artwork that, like Allred, tries to mimic Silver Age sensibilities then uh, this is something that you'll definitely find fun to have. Yeah, and the, the question is, Riley is on as a guest on Wednesday because it's usually Luis, but Luis is having problems with his computer and Riley can't appear tomorrow night. So the reason I'm calling him a guest is because he's usually on Thursday and not on Wednesday. But, but tomorrow I've put in my request for my paid time off leave because uh, I'm taking a long weekend. Right, and I'm getting that check to you uh, as soon as possible. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Um, so that covers that, and then I know entertainment news that we were talking before the show and about something. Um, we were talking about Tom Cruise in the Green Lantern movie, which is... Um, a rumor that was back, let me see if I can pull it up. It was a rumor back in the spring. Tom Cruise reportedly front runner to play Green Lantern. Warner Brothers might be enlisting A-list talent when they reboot Green Lantern Core, according to a new rumor about the future DC Comics movie. A blind so this this has this is a blind item from the celebrity rumors and nights. So take it with a grain of salt. States that Tom Cruise was in talks to star as the lead Green Lantern, but with one major caveat. The rumor states that the character is going to be killed off in the script, but the Cruise would not take the role unless that was changed. The item originally ran in March of this year without Cruise's name or without Green Lantern mentioned, and now the site just revealed that information. Cruise has long been mentioned as a rumor to be cast in the new as the new Green Lantern, especially with frequent collaborator collaborator Christopher McQuarrie in talks to join the film. No progress has been made on the film at this point, at least that Warner Brothers has publicly commented about. It should also be noted that this item originally ran in March. Those talks could have cooled or both parties could have moved on, especially since a deal has not yet been announced. Maybe if this rumor generates interest, it could stir up some momentum on Warner Brothers getting serious about locking crews down. This is good news for fans of DC Films and of Green Lantern, knowing that the studio is willing to spend some big money on talent to make this happen, this movie happen. Cruise, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Superman actor Henry Cavill previously spoke about appearing in a DC Comics film with Cruise, saying that he enjoyed his time in Mission Impossible Fallout. The film is rumored to feature both Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart, two of the most popular characters in the franchise. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it's just a rumor, mm -hmm. and that's the best we can do is report uh, that as a rumor. So what, um, what I extrapolated from this, and, and I, I think that this, what I was saying earlier even if this whole deal is a is a rumor, if there's some sort of truth behind the 
want for Tom Cruise and Tom Cruise, his hesitation coming from the possibility of being killed off and them referring to him as being a lead Green Lantern character. I mentioned earlier when we were discussing before the show, um, cause you, you had mentioned you were like, it, and, and I was agreeing with you and I was like, yeah, it wouldn't make sense if they're trying to cast him as Hal Jordan because you wouldn't kill off Hal Jordan. And then I had mentioned, well, what if they, it would be Hal Jordan, but they're killing him off because they're trying to adapt the, uh, what was it? Emerald, Emerald Twilight store. We couldn't remember which time of day it was, but it was an Emerald time emerald of day. Emerald day. Emerald yeah. dusk. Emerald afternoon where uh, Hal Jordan is uh, in the in the fallout of the death and return of Superman saga is overtaken with grief at the destruction of his city and takes on uh, the the role of, of Parallax and eventually Hal Jordan has to be uh, killed because he becomes a huge villain. So my idea is what if he it was Hal Jordan and and one of the things was we were saying like he's too old to because he's at the moment um, 56. So he's too old to, to last as an ongoing hero in these movies because 10 years goes by in no time in yeah. these types of franchises. Right. And, you know, as good as Tom Cruise looks for 56, at mm -hmm. least on camera, mm -hmm. um, he's not going to stay that way forever unless he continues to drink the blood of the youth. Um <laughs> Or like Fariha does, drinks the blood of her enemies. Right, and and maybe that helps him out. But I I feel like if that if this was the plan, and they're like, hey, we want you to be the main guy. Hal Jordan at that time in the comics was portrayed to be older. He had the white, completely white hair on the sides of his head. He was portrayed to be an older character, so it would make sense to have Tom Cruise portray a, a character who's actually close to his own age at that point. And by the end of the film die because he becomes the villain. And then he can continue appearing in films because as we know from the fact that comic books exist, um, a, no one ever dies and B Hal Jordan of course comes back as the specter. And then later comes back as young Hal Jordan during the green lantern rebirth miniseries by uh, Jeff Johns because Jeff Johns loves the Silver Age. So that was my idea is maybe this is just a, a, a rumor. Maybe it's not, but the, I, and maybe Tom Cruise does get attached. Maybe he doesn't, but if this rumor is true, I feel like that could be a heavy pointer towards what storyline they're wanting to use. Mm. And I know that the, the news article you read said that it would be John Stewart that they want to use uh, alongside him. So you could see possibly John Stewart take over as the main Green Lantern after that. Right. Which falls in line with in, in popular media being the cartoon from the early 2000s or whatever, the Justice League cartoon. It was John Stewart who was the main Green Lantern. It wasn't Hal, it wasn't Kyle. So they could be using John because they know that people still remember him from the cartoon or they could introduce Kyle because he does appear once the Green Lantern Corps falls after the whole parallax deal with Hal Jordan turning into a bad boy. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's uh, the Green Lantern Corps was the rumored name of the movie. So that's why there's going to be multiple Green Lanterns in it. Um, so, but these, these weren't even really articles. These are just reporting rumors. So blind items that are just like put out there. So there could be absolutely nothing to these. Right. There could be no, no truth at all. But, uh, I, I liked the idea. Yeah. It's fun to speculate on it, Yeah. It's definitely fun to speculate. And I, I've been watching a lot of, uh, of game theory and film theory videos on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm in that mode of like theorizing. And so of course I have to say, but Hey, that's just a theory a film <laughs> theory. Cause that, that's how he, I don't know if you ever watched any of his videos, but that's how he ends them all. Uh, I have not. 
it's it's if I was to give you like my top five YouTube channels, he'd probably be one of probably number one of non comic people and non friends of mine. And that, who is this again? Uh, the he's got two channel. His name's Matt Pat, and he has two channels. Game the Game Theorists. Um, actually, he has three. There's Game Theorists GT Live, where he live plays games. And film theory, uh, game theory talks about video game theories. Film theory talks about movie theories and TV theories and stuff like that. So it's it's really fascinating stuff. I got stuck in a, a big hole and I watched probably like fifty different videos of his in the past couple days uh, of videos I'd never watched uh, before, which is always fun because it's usually like games that I've never played, and I'm like, I'm gonna watch this video about a game I've never played, and then it makes me want to play that game. Mm. So. And what does he do while he's he's explaining stuff or his theory or he's what does he what what's he doing while he's playing the game? Well, it's not always because he'll have GT Live where he's actually playing through games and letting you watch him play games. But the other videos where he's explaining these theories, he's presenting evidence. Sometimes it's scientific evidence of like how fast does Sonic the Hedgehog actually go? Does he go so fast that it would destroy his legs? Oh, okay. uh, and then he That's puts cool. together the info based on like judging by the pixel count. You can tell that he runs this many pixels per second, which means it's this many, you know, feet per whatever. And this is how fast he runs. Is this harmful to a humanoid's legs, our bones, and cartilage and stuff? Yes or no? <laughs> so there's a lot of science behind it. Or in some things, you'll be like, you know, what is the hidden lore behind, you know, this? series of games uh or like what is kirby or metal gear solid 3 is actually a virtual reality mission and stuff like that oh wow this actually sounds really cool i can see why you yeah. like it so much i highly recommend the channel um he's a really genuine dude as well um really really cool guy my my wife Megan likes watching them too. She'll watch some of them with me. She really likes the uh, he does film theory videos on like horror movies. She really likes those. Yeah, I'm lining up my October horror thon or scary movie thon rather. So I, I'm starting to um, write down the names of movies that I want to uh, watch in October. I'm going to try and do a movie a day. Are you um? I, I know you said you prefer like demonic occult stuff. Were you a fan of the Blair Witch? Um, in theory, I liked it, but I, I didn't. Not it in didn't, execution. Um, yeah, I, I, it didn't scare me as much as I really wanted it to. Uh huh. Um, my wife and I saw separate movies that night. I remember. And it was a choice between that and Austin Powers. And I came out and I said, I should have seen Austin Powers. I'm really disappointed. Um, but I have, um, I, have a, I have a bunch of lists from Paste Magazine um, that I'm compiling. And also Luis and matthew from the uh, admin chat chat have recommended hereditary um and i want to see that i guess that still has to be released on like netflix or apple uh itunes or whatever apple tv um so i need to i'm hoping that gets released in time for my october because i also want to read i think we should read um a book a week of scary books Scary comic books, like Harrow County and Ghosted and things like that. Deadpool by Daniel Way. <laughs> um, well, I, I I asked about uh, Blair Witch because there there's a really good a really interesting film theory video. Whether you enjoy the movie or not, I recommend checking out his his uh, theory, which is something I think it's titled like. Uh, it's like there, there never was any witch, or the witch is is fake, or something like that. Mm. And he explains that the that the Blair Witch within the movie is 
a work of fiction. She, there, there is no witch. It's, she's all made up. And then he goes into details about what actually happened in the movie. And it's when you watch it, it's surprising how much things like really line up. So I, I really recommend it. And it might put a different light on the film for you. Oh, okay. You probably won't want to watch it again. Uh, <laughs> I haven't make, seen it since it came out. Make you think about things in a little bit of a different way. But I'll, I'll I, I mentioned to you at, a, at another point that I did, 31 movies in October, 31 horror movies. So I'll, uh, I think I made a list. I think I have a list of all 31 of those movies that we watched, given that a third of those were the Halloween franchise. But uh, yeah, there was some good ones on there. Yeah, I'm not a fan of slasher flicks. I like to be scared by uh, witches, satanic demons, uh, ghosts. Things unseen. Those are the kinds of things that really scare me. Have you um, watched the movie The Void? The Void. No. That one was pretty good, and it sounds like something that would be up your alley. Um, okay. I also don't like demonically possessed children. There's definitely not a as long as as far as I remember, there's not a demonically possessed child in this film. The Void. Okay. You know what? I'm going to start a new list. It's called Rye Film Commendations. Film Rye Commendations. <laughs> Rye Commended Films. Oops. Scary October Movies. Already got one. Hereditary's there. Get Out and The Witch. So let's see. You're saying what? The Void? Right. The Void. Okay. And I, I know it's a slasher movie, but just to what? stay on, uh, not that one. I was going to recommend another one. Oh. The Void is not slasher. I know that this one I'm going to mention is a slasher movie, but to keep it related to comics, uh, I believe Scott Lobdell wrote the script for this recent horror movie, and it's basically Groundhog Day meets Scream, and that's Happy Death Day. I watched it with Megan somewhat recently, and it was it was pretty fun. Hmm. Um. There's a movie that I really want to see, and I wanted to see it last year, but I didn't get to it. I think it's called The House on Willow Street. They, this, these bad guys, kidnap a woman to like torture her or do something to her, and it turns out she's a demon and turns the tables on them. And that is what I want to see. That's the kind of movie that I get a charge out of. I think that's called The House on Willow Street, something like that. Uh, so that's one I definitely want to see. I'm I ha I have a list upstairs and I'm gonna I'm gonna start adding to it. So what's the um what is the the what is it about slasher type films that turns you off? Um, I don't know. They don't, that kind of stuff doesn't scare me as much as the, the unseen, unknown kind of ghostly presence or demonic type of stuff, mm. which is things like that. Those are the things that really scare me. Slasher movies, I get the tension that gets built up. Um, and, and I understand the suspense, but they, that, that, it doesn't really scare me like I want to be scared. Like I, w like I want it so that I'm afraid to go to bed at night because some demon is going to be under the bed or something. That's what I I I, I want it so that uh, I can watch it in the middle of the day and I'm so scared I'm going to get possessed by a demon that I have to call my wife and have her come home early from work or something. See, I get that way. I it's like the the opposite for me because I I get that way for like slasher flicks because oh. those are the ones that are more like I believe that a dude in a mask could bust into my house and stab me in the face, but I don't believe that a dude who's actually a demon could bust into my house using an underworld portal and rip my chest open and eat my heart. <laughs> is that a movie uh i'll watch that probably i don't know i feel like i was almost describing 
Hellraiser for a second. Oh no, I loved Hellraiser, the first one. There's so many Hellraiser movies, and after the first one, they I, I feel like they all look exponentially worse than the last one. Yeah, two was reasonably decent, and then uh, it just fell right off a cliff after that. What about what about Chucky? I don't like uh, possessed toys either. So no puppet master. No. Now what, what do you what about like would you consider like uh th thrillers and stuff in there like uh like Silence of the Lambs? Oh, that's a good question. I love that movie cuz it's not a horror movie, but it's No, it, but it's it's scary. Yeah, it is scary. You're right. That's a good that's a good point. Um and it's just yeah. a good movie. Yeah. It's a, that's it's a good a point. Wholesome uplifting film to watch at any time. <laughs> uh, Chris M is saying the relic. That might be good. Um, yeah. So I, I don't like possessed children or possessed toys. Um, so no omen. I remember seeing the omen when it first came out. That kind of scared me. Um, what about children of the corn where it, it's children, but the main dude is actually not a kid. Yeah, now I saw that so long ago, I don't really remember the premise. They're possessed children, but what's the main guy do? He He's old. I don't know. He, he, I don't know. He's, it's a kid, but it's he's an old kid. Oh, I'll tell you what I have to see is It. I was going to ask about It, because it's there's not possessed kids in It but there's kids fighting against it. Yeah, that doesn't bother me. Okay. Did I, you, I, you haven't watched that new one? No, and I really want to see it. That's going to be the first thing I watch October 1st. And did you watch the, the old uh, two-part TV series? I have not seen that. Have you read the book? I have not. So you're in for a complete new experience here. Yeah. Okay, I so my my wife and I watched both the old and the the new, and I really like both of them. She was kind of let down by the new one because she said it was not as like flat out scary as she hoped it would be, but I really liked it. I thought it was super solid, um, and it it's it's cool because like it has that that very Stephen King way of storytelling with the, the kids where it feels like, uh, what's that, that other Stephen King book with all the kids stand by me. Yes. It's like stand by me, but they're fighting a horrific otherworldly evil. Okay. Yeah. I, that's totally up my alley. I, I remember the commercials freaked me out. So I really wanted to see it. I have the book, um, but I've still only read the first eight pages because I'm really bad at reading when there's not <laughs> pictures. Right. I'm really horrible. Uh, any thoughts on the old Universal Monster movies? I love those as a kid. My absolute favorite when I was younger was uh, The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Totally. That one definitely scared me as a kid. And that costume, oh my god! Like looking back at it now, like it so much respect for the the effects on that costume and in that film. Yeah, I agree. Like, it looked real. Looking at images of it, yeah, it looks legitimate. And I know, like, probably if it was you know, high definition colorized images of the uh, the creature, then it wouldn't look nearly as good as what we saw in an old black and white film. But amazing, honestly, amazing. Yeah. It, now, how about how about Alien? Oh, I love Alien movies. Um, but, but just Alien. So, the first one? Yeah. I would consider that, yeah, that freaked me out enough I, science fiction counts to me but that one because the original alien is more like a sci-fi horror and then the the james cameron aliens it became straight up sci-fi right um 
I yeah, I agree with that. You're right. Um, yeah, I uh, a science fiction thriller would fit the bill. <clears throat> I I have not seen a movie that I don't think got good reviews, but I saw it on a list that's a science fiction horror movie, and that's called Event Horizon. Isn't that the one where they go into like another dimension? Yeah. I've never watched that one, but I, I, for a while, I got really into like how time travel should work, like, or would work in the real world. And it has a lot to do with like traveling between dimensions. And someone told me I should watch Event Horizon because it was talking about stuff that I was like talking about. Oh, yeah. David Lowe Verso just said Event Horizon. So maybe I will be watching that. Um, cause that sounded good, man. I've got, my wife doesn't want to do the 30 movies again. Cause she said it was overkill. Um, yeah, I, I'm probably going to end up watching like three movies a week. I think I'm going to, I'm going to try and get in at least a dozen to 15. Mm -hmm. And I'd like, I would like for them to be movies that mostly I haven't seen before, but my wife likes to do the opposite and just watch the same movies every year. Um, so oh. she'll, she'll watch Halloween as a given the original one. And then she really loves the conjuring. Um, Ooh, the conjuring that's supposed to be good. That sounds like it's up my alley, right? Yeah. I, I don't think that that one has possessed children in it. But don't watch Sinister because that one has possessed children in it, if I remember that correctly. Okay. Uh, the Conjuring 2 has possessed children in it. So don't watch the sequel unless you just really want to. <laughs> okay. But it, it does have, it has a possessed child that appears in there. But the first Conjuring, I, I don't believe it was a child. Unless someone wants to correct me and tell me I'm stupid, um, which is fine. That one's um, really solid. The other one that I read about today was The Innkeepers. I don't think I've seen that one. Or I, I don't think I know that one at all. Guys who work at a and b and then when they're on their off time, they research it as a, as a haunted place. And it turns out it really is haunted. And I, that sounds really good to me. I'm trying to think of some other ones that my, my movies are all like put away right now. So I can't just look at my shelf, mm -hmm. but a lot of the ones that I have are slasher type films. So they wouldn't, excuse me, they wouldn't apply. Mm, that's okay. We've talked to, we've talked plenty and Luis has a lot of uh, knowledge. He has a heck of a lot of knowledge about scary movies. Um, so, and I'd like to, what I'm going to do personally is I want to start out in October reading Harrow County cause that's supposed to be scary. The, uh, and the, uh, what's it called are coming out the library editions. Right. Um, I'm trying to look at what I've got that could go in there for October reading. I could start reading BPRD hell on earth and Abe Sapien. Let's see, I've got, I read Uz, Uz, <laughs> Uzumaki, and I have Tomi and Shiver still. I could read those. Those are good. Um, Tomi, is, uh, Tomi and Shiver are both episodic type of things. Uzumaki is kind of episodic, but it has an overarching story. Tomi, every chapter is about the same character, but she's just going against different people and doing different things. The last few chapters kind of tie together into one story just to kind of tie everything together. Mm. And then Shiver is just an anthology straight up. Oh yeah. And ice cream man is supposed to be an anthology. Yes. Or is it supposed to be good? Yes. Ice cream man is fantastic. Um, I okay, read that good. on a whim and I really loved it. Um, maybe I can finally get around to reading the goon because that has some horrific elements to it, right? Like yeah, zombies fighting, yeah, fighting monsters. I also need to finish reading Buffy season nine now that ten is coming out in library editions. 
Um, nail biter, that'd be good. I have one and two of nail biter. Um, I'm surprised if, if you like nail biter because that's kind of slasher stuff. I don't mind slasher comic books. You're just weird. Yes, I am. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, lock and key. Yeah, lock and key's great. I already read that though. That's a um, good one. Deadpool by Daniel Way. <laughs> uh, Marvel Zombies. Werewolf by Night. Tomb of Dracula. I don't have Tomb of Dracula, but I, I'm sure you do. I do. You can read Carnage. Ooh, Carnage. That's a good the, idea. the Jerry Dugan run is all like Eldritch horror and stuff. Oh, I have the Carnage Omnibus. Yeah, and that has the Dugan run. Oh, it does. Or not the Jerry, uh, Jerry Conway. Sorry. There's too many Jerry's. I don't know, I've got some other stuff too. Chris M, what's that's more humor, Jess? What's more humor? To what are you referring in the chat? Goon? Maybe. Goon, yeah, Goon has elements of funniness to it. Um, Wilfredo, um, here's the thing about Deadpool by Daniel Way. Riley has been bad-mouthing it ever since I've known him, which is going on four or five years now. Oh, Nailbiter has some humor in it? Huh. Um, but he also bought it. He's been slamming Deadpool by Daniel Way since I've known him, but he's a completionist, so he also bought it, and that's why it's funny. This is this is probably the one item. Not, I'm not too embarrassed about or ashamed of owning the first one. The second one is probably the one item I'm truly ashamed that I bought in my collection. <laughs> but like just said, I'm a completist, and it's it's okay. So. I'm very, very open about saying that I'm fucking stupid for buying that book. Um, <laughs> I disagree with myself, but at the same time, I'm like, I have all of the X-Men books and every Deadpool omnibus. And I was like, okay, you know, fuck it. I'll <laughs> spend the money on it. I'll buy it. I'm going to kick myself about it, but I've got to have it. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it. I can live with having one book out of, you know, 3,000 books that I'm upset about owning. I can live with that. <laughs> I can live with it. And honestly, so the, the first volume mostly is made up of material that I actually liked. The first year, like the first 12 issues of his run were solid. And then steadily with every arc, I was like, eh, eh, ugh. Uh, and then by the time it got to the material that's in the second volume, I was like, okay, why am I still reading this book? And I, I dropped it. And then I, so the last almost, uh, I want to say the last 18 or so issues that are in this book, I've never read before. So now I get to out of morbid curiosity, finish reading Daniel Way's Deadpool, which is pretty much the only Deadpool material that I haven't completely read aside from some odds and ends and various mini series this is the 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 biggest chunk of like mainline deadpool material that i haven't read and at the very least i'm gonna get to read it and i, I want to read it from start to finish just completely read all of it so i can come out and bash the fuck out of it <laughs> um and then bash the fuck out of myself because <laughs> i am not i'm very obviously not against self-deprecation um when it comes to, you know, I'll talk shit about myself all day. Oh, yeah. Sure. Me too. No That's one else can talk shit about me. You can talk shit about me. Uh, <laughs> and anyone else on our channel can talk shit about me. Uh, my wife can talk shit about me. But I will talk the most shit about me. But but no one else. Please don't. I'm very sensitive. <laughs> I, <laughs> I right. Well, you saw the fragile ego I have that one dislike on my video Rocked my world this morning. So, 
Yeah, but that's a dislike from someone who uh, like they disliked it before watching like when it right when you put up a video. Right. Like, hey, look, it's just dislike. I know. So obviously, someone is this chicken shit fucker that's got too much cowardice to actually come forth and, and say something about how they, they dislike you or something. Maybe yeah. they're bitter because you, you dumped one of their favorite books in root beer or something. Uh, I think it had more to do with the fact that I said I loved all new Wolverine. That was the that was the subject of the video. Are you sure it wasn't uh, what's his name? The artist on Batman Cacophony? Uh, <laughs> Walt? Yeah, Walt Flanagan isn't <laughs> upset. That would be this awesome old, if this that show if, that old man. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome if they had ever seen me dump root beer on cacophony and widening gyre. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I I don't I wouldn't pay any attention to and the, the YouTube algorithms don't care about thumbs up and thumbs downs anyway. That's for us. Right. And for the the only thing when I look at a video and I'm trying to find like a legitimate information about how to do something, I'll be like, this video is gonna tell me how to change the oil in my car. If it has more thumbs downs than thumbs ups, then I know that something's wrong. <laughs> but if it's just someone like talking about an opinion on something and they get a bunch of like any types of thumbs down, I'm not, I don't give a fuck. And I don't care if, if someone thumbs down my videos, it just means that someone clicked on my link. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, and yeah, the algorithm doesn't care about that. The algorithm cares more about uh, length of of time that people actually watch your material. And the right. more people that watch more minutes of your material, the more likely it is that it'll pop up for other people on their their top feed and unrecognized. Oh, is that stuff. how it is? Yeah. Okay. So the the and this is a really detrimental fact against us. The probably best time amount of time to have on a video is like thirty minutes to like almost an hour. And, and we're almost at two hours right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've been kind of waiting for Luis, but I think Luis is is. is I think he had computer out. problems and just couldn't do it. Here, hang on one sec. I gotta go grab one thing. I'll be right back. Oh no, I'm all alone. What do I do? I'm not even on the chat, so I can't even see if people are talking to me. Oh shit, I should probably pull that up. I'm such a failure. And then all these chat comments are gonna load really slowly too. Awkward. Walt can have a failed art career. Dude still makes more money than all of us. Well, yeah, obviously. So much good stuff to read. Why waste time on Deadpool by Wade? Uh, well, Wade's Deadpool is in the X Force omnibus, and that was only a four issue miniseries. So it's not that much uh, material to waste time on. Riley, which run on Deadpool should Wilfredo read instead? Uh, it depends on what kind of comics you enjoy, but the th three runs that I would recommend highest would be either Joe Kelly's uh, run on the first ongoing series, Deadpool and Cable by Fabian, uh, Fabian Nicieza or Deadpool by uh, Jerry Dugan and Brian Posehn. I love that run. Cleveland Brown says I should thumbs down my own videos to show the haters that I don't care. I've thought about that and yeah, I'll, but then, you know, they, they don't, they don't know that it's me. Yeah. I just thumbed down their video right now. Our oh. video? 
Yeah, just there's one thumbs down, and that was me. I'll do it too. I'm gonna oh, see. Yeah. Oh, there's, <laughs> there's a second one in real time. Now everyone's gonna do it too. <laughs> like everyone's gonna, everyone thumbs down the video. Oh my god! And it's gonna. This one's gonna have tomorrow when. Uh, <laughs> Tomorrow, when Geo looks at the video and starts making thumbnails, he's gonna be like, "Guys, why is there twenty thumbs down on this video?" <laughs> That's great. Oh, there's five. We're on a roll, man. Uh oh. If, if I thumbs up, does it remove? Yeah, you can like move your your thumb from up to down. Oh, Gabe's gonna freak out when he looks at it. He looks at those things at the very yeah. Beginning. Gabe Gabe pays a lot of attention to the metrics. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think someone moved their thumb from up to down. <laughs> yeah, we're up to six now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> How can you do, man? Well, maybe we should start making 30 minute videos. Yeah, that's probably what we should do. <laughs> Someone's gonna like, what if people actually look and they're like, God damn, like, what did they do wrong here? Yeah, maybe it'll get people to watch it and just say, whoa, what? What went wrong here? Something really controversial must have happened. And then they get to like an hour 45 minutes and they're like, these motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, this is a good time for me to mention InStockTrades.com, where you can get up to 50% off your collected editions. Loyalty discounts add 2%. They often have sales that add 3% to that. Over $50 in orders in the United States gets you free shipping. They have fabulous packaging, fabulous customer service. That's InStockTrades.com, our fabulous sponsor that we love. And happy birthday again to Cameron Merkler and Cammy Jacob. As a birthday gift, I ordered books from InStockTrades. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I did two orders this week. I ordered yesterday, and then I got Batman 66 Monday. Man, I, I can't wait for you to get that Batman 66 book. I'm pretty excited for it now. I, I'm, like, I was excited for myself, but I, I think that it's something that you're really going to find a lot of love in. I think so, too, because I have fond memories of that show as a kid. Um. Well... I'm, I think I'm going to have to jump off. I, I was hoping that Luis would come on before I have to, but uh, I need to continue taking care of my dogs because my I've been alone at home all week. My wife's on a work conference. Ah, uh, okay. And I got to get going because I'm starving and I haven't eaten yet. Yeah, I need to eat too. I've got a – I bought a – okay, so she Did made – you go to the dollar store and get $20 of candy again? No, but – so she left and she's like, you need to go to the grocery store and get food for the week. I recommend that you blah, 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 blah. You know, basically just get easy to make stuff so I don't have to try and cook meals. I went overboard. Um, I spent as much on groceries meant for me to be alone for four days as we do for both of us in a week. <laughs> uh, because I took this opportunity and I told her, I was like, I'm buying Pop-Tarts and uh, I am buying cookies. So you can't stop me. Um, so I did. And I bought a what bunch kind of, of like, what kind of pop tarts? They didn't have my my wild berry, so I just brought bought frosted cherry. Ooh, but I love frosted cherry. Good choice. I don't know if if you've ever done this, and if you haven't, I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm I'm assuming that you you are a peanut butter eater like myself. Um, put some peanut butter on your pop tart. Oh, I've never done that. It's it's legit, man. It's legit. Uh, toasted or raw? Either way, but if you toast it, just be careful because it'll be hot enough to start melting the peanut butter. Right. But yeah, peanut butter on a pop tart is dope. I got Oreos that were peanut butter chocolate pie Oreos, so they have peanut butter and chocolate filling, and then the cookies are graham cracker cookies. Ooh. And they are the truth, the way, and the light, <laughs> hands down. Um, <laughs> 
and I bought a two pound bag of Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> two pounds. I'm probably in the last third of a pound right now. Oh my god! So I've been making some uh, movements on that one. <laughs> I used to love Sour Patch Kids. I haven't had them since I started this diet. Yeah, I should have so them. so good. I love things so sour my face turns in on it. The, have you had the extreme Sour Patch ones? No. They're, it's like they're, they're supposed to be extreme sour, but they're like, they're just better. They have, they're a little more sour, but they have more flavor. Oh. So they're even better. You can uh, get them at my favorite store, uh, 7-Eleven. Ah, and did you see Gabe is in the chat and what he had to say? Um, is he making fun of me? No. <laughs> Gabe, don't worry. I, I I made everyone here. Look, one of those is me. And one of them's me. I, I just took mine off. I, I'm sorry, Gabe. I didn't mean to hurt you. <laughs> That's the best. Oh man. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get going. I gotta okay. make my own dinner too. I I've got a microwavable burrito with my name on it. Thank you for being uh, with us tonight on a Wednesday instead of a Thursday. Thank you uh, for letting me uh, take some uh, time off. This has been. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> HR will be contacting you with your check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and where can they find you on the interwebs? Uh. Um, that reminds me, I need to start the DC Omni poll. I was going to say uh, oh, the yeah. omnibus collector.com. Um, I need to start that the, the now annual second annual D DC most wanted omnibus uh, thing. I'm going to start that and make a post. It's going to be on the website, the omnibus collector.com. I'm going to post something on the group, the omnibus collectors, uh, comic swap and community so that people can start submitting their votes for their top 10 most wanted. And then in a month or so time, I can tally those votes and we'll find out if swamp thing is still number one. It should be sugar and spike Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen. I know what I'm not voting for. Sugar and Spike needs an Omni. Gosh darn it. Well, if uh, what's his name that y'all made everyone buy the the Fat Fury, if he gets his own books. <laughs> um, and yeah. Kirby Popnecker. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to peace out, uh, go get some dinner, and play with my dogs and my toys. Okay, everybody. Thank you in the chat for watching. Appreciated, appreciate all the participation. All the uh, suggestions and participation and questions and participation and peace and love, peace and love. Oh, you can find me on YouTube on Omnidogs Vault and on Instagram, Omnidogs underscore Vault. Thank you for watching. Peace and love.